we do need to pull back as, and yeah. regroup and, and, and get ourselves together. Get ourselves together. It doesn't take all the black community. Let me tell you this, and, and, and anybody knows history at all, it doesn't take every person in the society to make a change. When the Russians took over, uh, uh, the, the communists took over Russia, it wasn't every Russian that participated. In fact, to be honest with you, uh, uh, the, the Bolsheviks was a minority group within the Communist Party. They weren't even the major group in the Communist Party. The Metrovics were. But, but they kept on plugging with Lenin. They kept on plugging, and they, and they got themselves so organized that they began, once again, you, you, you mentioned Hitler, that the Nazi Party, the Socialist Party, was a minority party. But but they but, yes, but they was. refused but they refused to to let their minority status keep them in in a, in a minority mindset. And yeah, there's a there's a thing called a minority business, mindset. Bishop. Yeah. They were serious business bishop and they killed a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, were. but we understand that. We understand that. We you know, the, the we method and the methodology. To do but, that. See, here here's the thing. Mm-hmm. People need to hear more of you. They need to hear more of me. There are other people they need to hear of, but they can't because we are on minor media. On the mainstream media, they push these bug dancing house Negroes fresh out of a minstrel show. And that's Hmm. CNN, Fox, uh, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, Mm -hmm. uh, OWN, whatever it is. They got bug dancing, half-stepping, Handkerchief head wearing, uh, head rag. <laughs> I'm about to laugh. <laughs> head rag for the house, Negro. <laughs> that they push the TR folks ranging from that buffoon Al Sharpton all the way up to that other buffoon. What's the one? Uh, uh, the bald headed one that's got this on CNN. They love so much that sounds so stupid. There's oh, always God. kissing butt. Don Lemon? He's about Ben Jones. Oh, he's talking about Jones. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah, that's they, right. they got all of these half-stepping folks that they shoved down our throats. And then you got that fool. He even took a picture with his husband dressed up in that tux dress. His white husband, by the way. And see, they pushed that. Oh, he's so entertaining. Why are you watching that fool? But I like it. Boy, I caught it. But I really like, damn, you aren't getting anywhere if you can't give up that kind of buffoonery to make a point. All the, I, I we bail out of Hollywood over and over. That Black Panther movie was necessary for Walt Disney and ABC to stay soft because they've gotten a huge judgment taken against them. So we lie to die. Got a picture where the last final scene in it was black women of the tribe with swords and spears and arrows and guns and future weapons trying to have a gun battle, a old time battle with the men of the tribe and killing each other. And that's what we subsidized. So Walt Disney, who was a racist dog, and ABC can keep doing what they're doing. Well, and we well, don't have better sense than that. My Lord. But let they me, need uh, money and get, they get, put out a girl's trip with three lesbians acting a damn fool and embarrassing the idea of a college-educated black woman by what they are portraying on the screen. And we got every sister dragging her little children to go see that nonsense. And the parking lot's completely full and all of the shows are sold out. Well, let me get, get to... Uh, the final couple of questions, because I really want your opinion on both of these questions. Uh, yes, one of them is what we what we're saying in in essence. And thank you, Judge Brown, for for, for the insight into really where we are and why we're where we are too. We are not taking this our our, our own lives seriously. We, we 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 march with everybody else. We support everybody else's dream and all of their visions and all their aspirations. We're marching with this group and that group and the other group, and we and we very seldom, if any. Uh, support our own. Uh, we we have senators right now in Congress. Uh, we have uh, uh, in the in the House of Co- of Senate of the Senate. We have Congresspersons in the House of Representatives. Uh, you know, it starts there. What, what what are they doing to promote other than the Democratic Party itself? What are they doing to promote 
the their own constituents. Many of them are uh, senators or congresspersons in districts and in areas that that are that are predominantly African American and minority. So what are they doing? So it starts. It, it does start. Like you said, it starts with the Congress. We have people in the Congress now. Many members of the House of Congress, uh, which is the House of Representatives, and a few in the Senate. What are, what are they doing to promote anything that would advance our people? Uh, the, one no. of the questions. Let me. I'm going to ask two more questions. Uh, one of them. Then we're going to open the lines to, to the um, to the listening audience, and then our panelists can respond to some of their questions. Uh, the first is. Name four issues that are important to you that you would like to hear those who are running for office take a stand on. And if they don't address or agree with you on these points, what will be your course of action? So, again, name four issues that you consider very important to the black community. And if they don't answer them, those in office and those that are running for office, or they don't answer, or they don't agree with these points, what should be our course of action? We're going to start with uh, Bill. Why don't you start? Thank you for and that question. And then DX, and then Judge Brown. Yeah, I think the, um, that's a challenging question for me, because I know that all politics is local, and power is local. Like, I'm listening to the judges' responses about the conditions of black people and our mindset as a direct result of all of the harm that slavery has caused us. And, um, it don't make a difference if you are fighting a fight where people don't have the capacity to make the change. Like here in the state of Pennsylvania, State Representative Chris Rabb has already begun to introduce resolutions and then working with NCOBRA to actually determine what we can put forward in legislation in the state of Pennsylvania. Like you can begin these efforts in your city, in your township, in your state, and you build power locally, and then you build it collectively nationally. So we, it's absolutely possible. Um, it's absolutely possible, and we just need to actually leverage power where we actually have it. And you're right. Minorities always drive the most significant change. If we think about the impact of the Tea Party, those suckers were the individuals that actually gave us Citizens United, and that transformed how our politics work and, therefore, how all of us live our daily lives. So there's no excuse or no reason for us to not stop shucking and jiving and really get to doing the work so that we can drive the change that we need. Because if good people don't lead, horrible people will. My, my, that's, that's, that, that's good. That's good. DX? Yeah, um, <laughs> that was really, really good. And the, the, the good judge said some very profound things uh, in regards to you know, the condition of the mindset of our people and those who are in the positions to are, are put, put there to make changes for our people and have failed miserably. Um, and, the, and for obvious reasons, the uh, majority of them are already purchased by the banksters and, and, and what have you. However, the, the most important thing uh, to me and I truly think that most that all of you will agree that the most important thing now, where we are now, uh, is looking at the coming events that are going to affect every human being on this planet, and that is the depletion of the agricultural system. Most people are not paying attention to that. Most people don't even know that it's happening. But agriculture is failing globally, and we are moving into a time where the just-in-time delivery system, which is the three-day delivery to the store every three days, that is going to go offline within the next, I would think, 10 years, offline. And so we are faced with a dilemma that in no time in, in, hist- in the last 400 years, that's that very special number, 400, this is the first time in 400 years that the United States is going to be faced with this dilemma. And it's not just the United States. It's global. Uh, we have been given the concept of global warming 
uh, anthropogenic causes, meaning caused by man, when in fact the planet is not warming and it's cooling. And so the question is, why would Al Gore tell us one thing is happening when something else is happening? It's now called climate change, and that's real. The climate does change, but it is a a systemic, excuse me, a secular event that is occurring. Um, if we, and you guys get a chance, and, and Rhonda, study the last 400 years history, and you're going to find something very interesting, that 400 years ago, this occurred before the crop yields completely failed. And it is a, it is a, cyclical, a cyclical event that occurs. We are about to face that now. No one in Congress is talking about it, and, and I can only assume it's because they don't want people to know. And I can only assume that because they need for certain people not to be around anymore. And so I think that's the most important issue um, that is at hand here. Re- reparations, Reparations is a thing that, I, like I said, I feel that it's a product. At this point, it's it's being it's used to socially engineer us into the idea of waiting, and there is no time to wait. The only way we can get what we want and what we need to survive here is by taking it. You cannot ask someone who wage war against you to give you anything. The system that they have in place that we're playing along with does not work for us. We're we're 200 years into that system. It only takes a few months to realize somebody's not going to do something. And the rest of the world seems to be preparing for something like China. China is in Africa. They are building a huge infrastructure in Africa. The Russians are preparing for something. They're preparing for what's coming, and that is the the, uh, food crisis globally. The United States is the only one not doing that. Uh, They have the railroad to nowhere now that went into into the desert of Africa. And if you look at that area now, it's turning green. It's green. Um, we, we are in serious trouble here as a people, and we are not aware because we've been so programmed to look at everything other than looking in the mirror to recognize that the, the, the fight and the battle that we've been fighting has been our inability to look truth in the face and recognize that you don't ask someone who's taken something from you to give it back. Okay. Well, thank you for that. And we certainly do need to look into that uh, climate change and what exactly it really means and not what it's promoted to to us to mean. Uh, we really need to look right. at the truth about some things. We need to look at things honestly, even even, even the issue of race. We need to look at it honestly. We, we're blaming Donald Trump for racism almost. I mean, this country is, is weird how we want to always want to get a scapegoat and how we want to now all of a sudden. Racism has always been here. It's always been here. And, 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 and I'm glad what you said about some of the other issues like, like climate change and other things. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure what Bill said, that we need to you know, take a, a serious look at ourselves and see what we need to do to change, first of all, within ourselves and amongst ourselves, and then to join forces, almost like Judge Brown said, to, to back up in order to move forward and, and then be ready to move forward, to take whomever will be willing to go with us, not wait until the masses come, because sometimes the masses come after they see what you're going to do. I was a pastor for years, and sometimes it takes a few dedicated souls to move forward for other people to jump on the bandwagon and follow afterwards. So um, we need we need true leadership, not people like like Al Sharpton and others 
that are just uh, really are, are puppets that are on a string being pulled, Roland Martin and others like them, that are just puppets of the Democratic Party, that are just used by our party, and their concern for the, for the race is, is ingenuous, to say the least. It's ingenuous. And really, I would say more than that, that, that it really is. is, Gerald, is let me, let me, hello? Let me jump back in for a second. Let me jump back in for a second, Gerald, please. Excuse mm-hmm. me. Um, the, the idea of party, you know, that's heads they win, tails we lose. There is, that is a construct to make you think that you're part of something. Nothing changes no matter who's in that office. The, uh, the, the, uh, the direction that they're going is perpetual. And the dips, the highs and the lows, are there to, to make it believable. There is no multi-billionaire organization that is going to spend billions and billions of dollars to roll the dice every four years. It is totally dismissive to think that that's actually happening. And so all of this confusion, and I've been doing a, I've been in a serious study, a serious study to understand what this is that's happening to our planet and why are we not being told about it? You have to go for yourself and see it and look at what's happening. There is something happening on this planet and it has nothing to do with none of the so-called mysterious technology. It is, it's, it is a natural occurrence that is happening that they cannot control. And they would rather for all of us to uh, be bumping heads just what perfect point is this? The idea of reparations being in the Senate and the upheaval that it is going to create, that is a distraction. That's a distraction to keep you from seeing what's actually happening. There's something else that's happening on this planet that they do not want people to recognize. And so it makes perfect sense for this idea to be on the table and, a, and a, a Congress or senator to say that Hispanics should be involved in that. That makes no sense. It will only do one thing, cause more distraction. To say that the Native Americans should be included in that. They should have, they should have, been, uh, should have received reparations a long time ago. Well, most we already said they the have already. People, they they received right, it many most, times. Yes, I mean, they, 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 all you got to do is look at the casinos out there and no, no, uh, monies that they received. Uh, really. So, I mean, but it's, there have been many really. times. We talked about the, the quarter of a, a no, billion dollars, let me, let me finish you know, that we've already had. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me finish. Um, most of the people who were enslaved were, were, are in South America from the African continent. And so... There's all of these strange questions that you, we have to ask about what actually happened here. We really don't totally know what actually happened here. Uh, the, 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 the conquerors write the history, and all of those who disagree are dead. And so I say that to say this. That has taken me back to look at history and I stumbled across an old picture of George Washington crossing the Delaware River. You all remember that picture? Mm-hmm. Everybody remember that picture? Go back and look at that picture. There's something very interesting in that photo. I'm not going to tell you. Go back and look at that picture. There's something in that picture that doesn't belong there. And every time you see a painting of that photo, it's that picture, that painting, it's in there. But actually, I discovered something else. It does belong there. It's part of a cycle. And that's what's coming here now in our lifetimes. And that's what we should be preparing for because there's a reset coming. Everything that we've been functioning in in the governmental system that we know of appears to be ending it appears that way, and I actually think it is. And so what we're fighting for, it should be for us to separate ourselves from a condition that will never change for our benefit. Well, thank you for, your, for that information. 
and we need to look into that. Judge Brown, you want to chime okay, in? Okay, let this? me jump in on. Let me jump in on this. One thing that's yeah. happening is there is a crunch going on in terms of the world's increasing population is reaching a density that the planet is having a hard time supporting. Humanity has long been subject to nature, but it has become a force of nature itself. One of the problems that I think going on worldwide around while nobody, why nobody is being told about these things is not a conspiracy. It's just that the average people who ought to know something about it are too ignorant, stupid, and undereducated to be able to speak on it because they don't know. And they're operating on older paradigms that are no longer viable in today's time. So that's the thing about the environment. It needs to be addressed because uh, the tipping point has probably been reached and there will be consequences to pay. But more immediately, there needs to be drastic educational reform from the bottom to the top. And on the top, Absolutely. It needs to be such that higher education is reasonably affordable and uh, subject to accessibility by people who have been treated to a reasonably vigorous educational experience from kindergarten through 12th grade, which is not the case now. It's been dumbed down until it's almost crumbled. Next thing, we need the government to step in and do something that – Uh, would take the United States from being in its position of the sole member of the industrialized world that has not done anything to address industrial technology and computerization that's obsoleted most working people. Uh, We need to do something about that. We need to have serious welfare reform because, as it is now, it's become an enslaving trap, and it's allowed people to breed to dysfunction. We need to make it into work fair, or we need to make it into student or study fair. This thing right now where you get paid for doing nothing and having babies, or at least a fallout from that, is obsolete, and it's very bad for us. We need prison reform, but one of the things we need on prison reform is we need to make it penalized to be single parent female hit a household and have more than one or two children in that condition because that needs to be suppressed rather than to be encouraged because it causes the lack of production of men in the severely impacted communities which causes a downturn we need to do something about turning back this emasculation of the country because that's one of the things wrong with politics it has become feminized It is emotional, it's illogical, it's no longer subject to hard reason, logic, rationality, and analysis. It is something else. PC, politically correct, is turned into a form of religion that to deviate from becomes a heresy or blasphemy. We have got to do something in terms of the long-term effects of prison reform because the main problem with prisons right now is it has nothing to do with crime. It has a whole lot to do with controlling surplus labor. There are not being enough jobs to go around, so the solution is a Band-Aid that's very ineffective in the long term, and that's just simply put them in a warehouse at the slightest excuse and get rid of the problem of having too many people for the jobs to be filled. But part of the process of that is cutting back the production of people who would labor, and it causes them to mentally do stuff like, yo, man, I got too much pride to be flipping bacons that don't Mickey D's, man. I got my hoes take good care of me. And see, that leaves a labor vacuum that causes a problem on the southern border because those positions need to be filled. But the people that have been targeted cause themselves not to fill those positions. So there's a bad thing about that. That causes the community to be torn down. This whole effeminization of the country has got to be turned back and stopped. Because there's one thing about it. Uh, You have the rights to do a lot of what's being done, but to exercise the rights in the way that they are exercised becomes license. In other words, Eisenhower said it 60 years ago. He said, when this republic becomes more concerned with exercising its privileges than securing them, then it has become decadent and it is about to go out of the picture. That's what happened to Great Britain, and that's what's happening with us, too. 
Next thing is that we need to do something in our communities about de- developing some decency and showing people how to raise children. You have to home train these children. You can't expect a unhoused, broken puppy to go out in the, a polite society and act like it's got some kind of coof. It doesn't happen. And they're people puppies. You go to a restaurant, the kids are running all over the place. Everybody loud, and they're on the other side of the restaurant. They want to share their conversation with you on the far side of the room. I mean, we got to stop that. You walk out in a park and out at a restaurant for, uh, frequented by blacks, and somebody's MF this and MF that and, you know, the B and the H's and, you know, and all this other kind of stuff like that. You know, that's unnecessary. That just shows uncouthness. We have and, to and, get some, do something about that if we want to have a polite society. I, I, I agree with you stop. because that's that's one thing. You and I were raised in the 50s. Uh, and 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 and, uh, and, uh, and that when that was instilled in us, we were manly when we went out to to dinner or even when we went to relatives' houses. I know we used to go to our great aunt's house here in Philadelphia and uh, other places that we would go in the church and other places, and we knew how to act. We were taught, we were instructed, and we were made to at first, and then eventually became a part of our nature, our second nature. We knew how to act when we went to church. We knew how to act when we went to a restaurant or some or, or to a relative's house that we weren't normally used to being in their home. We knew how to act and sit quietly to, to ask if you wanted anything in a quiet manner. Yeah. And, and I know now, you know, you're supposed to let children be who they are and all of this new new age they psychology. They grow up to be fools when they're ra- they're not, when they have their raising neglected that way. They grow up to be unruly fools as adults. That's true. And sometimes I get angry when I say, what fool has been abdicating their responsibility to raise their child by having an unruly brat like this? No, it's not cute. It's disgusting and ill-mannered. And who is the fool responsible? You? You need to get out of my presence because you're not doing right. You're an embarrassment. And it starts, starts, and you're right, it starts in the home. Everything, almost like what, what Bill said, it starts in your local. And the very first local is your home. Your first teacher is your mother. Your father, really your mother, to be exact. Your father, to a lesser extent, but still, if he's in the home. These are your, your home first teachers before with. you go out in the street. If you got and so we need to start in the home. Begin with. I, I think and these women nowadays, they bit. get told that marriage is a form of slavery, so you don't need a husband. What I need a man for? Oh, boy. And you have sons? Yeah, what good a man for anyway? Well, if you don't know what a man's supposed to be good for, how are you going to raise your boys? I know how to be a good mama, but what are you supposed to be raising them to be? If you don't know what a man is supposed to be about or what he's good for, you can't raise your sons to be one. I think that um, also it's it's a cultural issue because we allow people who don't understand us really to educate our children. And if someone has never treated you right, they will definitely never teach you right. Culture is the immune system of the people, of your people in the uh, social system that we function in. And so our culture, we have been culturally obliterated, actually. Um, The the hip-hop culture is a perfect example of that. How in today's time, we allowed... Europeans to extract the cultural wealth of these artists worth billions and billions of dollars, and we have nothing to show for it. And so in that process, uh, over time, uh, I remember going to the movies in the the 70s, and I watched uh, Willie Dynamite. He was the hero, and he was a pimp who slapped women. But that's what we saw as a hero. Uh, uh, the Mac. And so these, these things were systematically done, that, which I'm, I'm, it's a rhetorical question. Um, why are we like this? How did this happen? We play a role in it. But uh, if we look at the genesis 
of our interaction with the European uh, in, in regards to removing the male to begin with uh, and raising the child uh, with, with a, from, to give them the European worldview. Um, this is what we're struggling with today. Um, we don't, we speak in English, and that psychologically, and it's a scientific proven fact now, is an issue. It rewires the brain. And so we have a lot of issues that we don't, most people don't even know about or understand them yet, that we're just figuring out how and why are we in the condition we're in, even though we are amongst these people that will never change. They can't change. Their sole survival is based on them keeping us insane and keeping us backwards and upside down. I just well, let me. Uh, I want to. I want to. I want to interject because about the, the time is over now.